And the next presentation will be, I'm spelling the name probably wrong, but Hosing Yi Chen from Aalto University, Finland, Adversarial Trends in Mobile Communication Systems from Attack Patterns to Potential Defenses Strategies. Okay, hello. And you pronounce it almost right, so <laughs> great. Mm, let me show my screen. Yeah, so hello everyone and welcome to my presentation. I am Shani Chen from Alta University. And this work is collaborated with Seed Raw from Nokia Bell Labs. So we look into the mobile communication systems and we wanted to find the attack patterns and try to also look into what are the potential defense strategies that can come out from that results. So I will start with my problem statement. What are the main goal of this work and introduce a bit of the background and methodology. And then I'll present you the results and the defense strategies that we proposed. And finally, some conclusion and discussion and the future direction of this work. So our main goal in this work is to understand adversarial behaviors in the telco system, to be specific. And in other industry like enterprise network, threat modeling has been a common practice to do this. Especially many of you might have heard of the MITRE attack framework, which they describe the adversarial behaviors with tactics, techniques, and procedures. So TDP in short. And in our previous work, we de developed Badra, which is also a MITRE attack-like framework that captures telco-specific threats so that we can also have a common representation of the attacks in the telco network. And in this work, we model the tags, meaning like tagging the tag step with the corresponding techniques and tactics with the framework, with the Badra framework, and investigate it in the attack patterns that detect from those attack models. So brief background about the mobile communication systems and what Badra framework covers. So this is, um, it covers from 2G to 4G and end-to-end -end mobile networks. So it looks something like this. It starts from the UE, the user equipment, and includes also the radio access network, which is different between 2G, 3G, and 4G, and the core network elements to the service and application network, including belling charging domain, IMS, operation support system, OSS and also the interconnection and roaming network, which use some other protocols such as SS7 and also the GRX IPX interconnect um, network. So this is a brief picture of what it includes. And the Badra framework, uh, it, we describe, this is like a meter attack. So we describe it as tactic and techniques. And in the tactic, it's, uh, mostly like MITRE attack as well, but we have the standard protocols misuse stage, which we wanted to highlight the telco specific threats. And coming to the methodology, it's quite straightforward. So we have a tag pool from literature survey that is included in the original Badra paper. And we did some attack collections and also the selection of the sources. Then we modeled the attack using a WAP tool that we built ourselves. And after collecting all the attack models, we did some graph analysis to deduct the attack patterns and trying to find the insight to, to propose the defense strategy. For the attack collection, as I mentioned, we collected from the original Badra paper. And in that paper, it includes two group of um, sources. The first group is like the peer reviewed papers that described one or multiple attack scenarios. And the second group, we also have the security reports from standardization bodies, such as 3GPP, GSMA, and INISA, and other secure white papers from security companies that include some real instance report. And we try to select 
multi-stage attack that includes clear initial access and impact and also covers a variety of attack factors. So we can try to mim mimic the, the real network in the operator's side uh, from the academic papers. So in the end, we modeled 60 attacks populated from 30 of the sources, and you can find the sources in the paper. During the attack modeling stage, we modeled the attack independently, like me and Sid, and we try to, um, after, like, because there are some conflicts when we are modeling it. For example, the reconnaissance stage or the discovery stage might not be really specified in the papers itself. So we have to make some assumptions based on our own expertise and resolve the resolve the conflict. So then we have a. a agreed model on the tax. So this is one example of how we model an individual attack. And this example, which is the NC catcher communication interception, to start with, uh, from the reconnaissance stage, an attacker might need to get some information of the target mobile, so parameter mapping for mobile. And then to the initial access would be the attacker usually set up rogue base station and trick users from connecting to it. So the initial access would be the radio access network. And then uh, the attacker can send the identity request message as a legitimate base station to get in C from the UE. So this exploit the pre-AK technique. And then a uh, attacker can downgrade the UE to use 2G by, for example, radio jamming or other pre-AK messages that describe 4G, uh, that disable 4G services. And then by doing so, they can collect the NC and also other um, to stand in the man in the middle position to intercept communication data. So in the end, they might achieve call interceptions, SMS, and data interceptions if it's unencrypted. And also having the NC an attacker can impersonate a subscriber in the core network and probably leads to other identity related attacks. So yeah, this is one example of how an attack scenario, what attack scenario can be populated into the framework. And coming to graph analysis results, we wanted to understand some criteria, for example, the association of the techniques and what techniques are more important and also what um, the diversity of the attack path itself. And we kind of associated with the graph analysis methods that we found suitable. After, so this graph shows the um, attack graph after modeling the 60 individual attacks. So each attack is a path. And we investigated, for example, in the weight of the edges, so the thickness, as you can see, and also the weight in and out of a technique node, which is represented on the number above, and the number of connection each node has. So as a pri pri primary like uh, results, and security analysis can identify the strong association of techniques and the highly connected nodes as a information source to prioritize their defense. And in real life scenario, for example, the operator's goal would be to build defense strategy to reduce the thickest edges or looking into the highest sum of the weight in and out and to reduce the number of the highly connected nodes. We also look in, into the common subpath, include like subpath includes three to five nodes. Each node represents a technique that is used. And we found that, for example, exploit roaming agreement has strong association, like the technique before and after exploit or agreement has strong association. For example, GTP-based techniques, diameter-based techniques, and also SS7-based techniques are usually used after the exploit roaming agreement. So an attacker can send those messages between home and visited network and try to get the subscriber info or conducting some building frauds, for example. 
And before the exploit roaming agreements, usually attacker would probably need um, to search in the internal database, so internal resource search, to see whether the uh, roaming agreement contracts or such. And also other CN protocol scanning, which stands for core network protocol scanning, to look for other connected core network nodes. So from this results, an, a security an analysis can probably identify what are the bottleneck. So in this case, the exploiting roaming agreement. And in some, pa in some papers, which they suggested that, for example, deploy edge agents would be a possible way to reduce the risk from the roaming agreement and also impose policies to filter incoming traffic and having some authentication between roaming partners. You have five minutes. Okay, yeah. And yeah, we also try to indicate the importance of the technique for uh, using the loss of connectivity. So you've, as you can imagine, like if there is a higher percentage of loss of connectivity, meaning that the technique is more used in the model attack and there are not so many ways to work around it. So after removing one node, what are the loss of connectivity? This is what the results shows. And the third uh, strategy would be from to identify important techniques with this graph. And for example, in this case, the operator network mapping would be the most important one, then deploying some detection or defense mechanisms on uh, to prevent the network mapping or close other unnecessary ports or public facing services would be suggested. And the last result, which is the diversity of attacks. Uh, okay, I might not have enough time, but what we wanted to point out here is that from the result of this unique path, the, op the operator can prioritize in two ways. So um, this graph shows the diversity of attack focusing on one specific initial access to one specific impact. So from attacker's point of view, you can try to see what are the capability and what are their goals. And from the operator's point of view, they can think of themselves what are the weakest initial access point and the least desired impact. And after having the combination to look into the exact unit paths and identify what are the what what to fix when what to prioritize. So now there might be some question popping up. For example, can the tax collection from literature surveys indicate a tax observed in the wild? And also, are the techniques too high level to provide some actionable insights? So for the first question, we try to address it by include the attacks that covers a variety of attack factors in the tax surface. But we do admit that the number of the technique selection in the work might not be represented, the may, might not represent exactly the frequency of the technique use in the wild due to a lack of publicly available security incidents. And but we believe that this work demonstrates the use of graph analysis methods with threat modeling framework. So when an operator actually operator actually have the is incidents report and the real world. Um, data, then they can use our methodology to perform and have some more in-depth um, insights. So the future direction, since the framework is relatively new and it's not included in uh, 5G is not included yet, so this would be one of the um, main priority, and also to have it as more open source and community driven, to have some real world data and open the discussion of the industry. And also, since the techniques now are still quite high level, so having sub-techniques to provide some granularity would be really nice for it to be more specific and having the detail for automation as well. And finally, it would be um, to identify the threat groups exactly in the real world and also the attack patterns would be much more helpful as the next step for this work. So yeah, thank you. If you have any question or feedback, feel free.
So you can raise your hand and ask question, ask, ask be unmuted to ask questions, or you can write your questions to the chat. I could ask myself one. You are using graph analysis. So are you able to actually find something that is very important to react based on graph analysis that you would actually miss if you are using some other model to try to detect what, what are the current important threats? So I think, for example, the because this one is more on the aggregated view. So I guess what you mean by other models might, for example, I know people are using Stride that um, uh, look into their own network product or so. But I feel like this threat, this graph analysis, it's more on the aggregated view. So, um, for example, with this loss of connectivity, without the this graph analysis, you might have a rough idea what of what is happening, but not really quantifying what. Um, how do you say? <laughs> yeah, right. So this is more like quantifying and visualizing what is actually happening than than just using uh, um, yeah, anal analysis of individual attacks <laughs> than this aggregated view. If that how if that answer your questions. <laughs> Yeah, it it answers. It's probably very hard to actually see what is important and what is not if you don't have like any model. So definitely this is useful. Are there any other questions? Please ask or write to chat if you want to ask through that something. Okay, I think there are no, no more questions. Thank you very much for your presentation. Very valuable work. Good, good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this marks uh, the end of day one. So NordSec is done for today. Uh, we will resume tomorrow with day two, which starts at 10 a.m. in the Eastern European. Time zone. So see you tomorrow and thank you for joining us today.